thank you for being here. Thanks to, especially to Tamara for the invitation and all the support and patience uh, while dealing uh, with the exhibition at South Gallery. Um, I would like to be fast because we don't have uh, that much time. Uh, I've been asked to present my work. I will show it uh, uh, quite fast. If you have any questions, I think you can reserve them for um, for later when we have the discussion. And I'm also showing a couple of uh, examples of other artist artworks that I think could be relevant for the discussion. So just if you can, please keep notes and uh, that's going to nourish uh, our discussion at the end. Uh, well, I want to begin with this uh, image that relates to the project I'm, I'm showing here in South Gallery. And well, it's a student ID card part of the Better Life Corporation project. Um, this project started uh, in 98. It's um, a long-term uh, project uh, based on the free distribution of products and services. It very much started as interventions in Mexico City, uh, reacting to the urban context and systems of a uh, city. So in this case, uh, the student ID card gives you all these uh, uh, popular discounts. And I decided to produce my own as part of the project. So anyone can um, apply or ask for a student ID card. Uh, it uh, was first distributed in the office of the project, then uh, online, and then in museums and uh, cultural spaces. Um, but uh, I would like to clarify that it all started as this loose series of interventions in the urban context. It didn't start as an art project. It was just reacting and, and doing these crazy things, either in supermarkets, subway. And then uh, it was necessary to generate a structure for the project when I uh, created the, the website for it as part of the whole corporate image. So uh, this other product service uh, it's an intervention in supermarkets, changing the barcode um, on the label of the food to lower the prices of uh, <laughs> the uh, basic food and, and uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's both, it's an intervention uh, as a service, but also I've been producing the uh, barcode stickers for people to take from uh, uh, galleries or museum spaces. So you can have it in your wallet. Um, uh, I think it's very symbolic when, when I distribute it that way, but um, uh, I love when, when I can go to supermarkets and, and do it. It becomes almost invisible, no? There is no real uh, track of, of what happens with it. Um, this is how the office space looked uh, around uh, 1999 in the Latin American Tower, and it was also um, a way to uh, have a corporate image and structure, because uh, uh, mainly the visitors were people going to this very symbolic building in Mexico City that it's very much related to modernity, no? It was the uh, highest uh, building in the city, and it used to be in every postcard about Mexico City, uh, but it's very badly maintained and it was very cheap for me to have this little office space. And from there I used to distribute these products and services and uh, I would also uh, give recommendation letters, the typewriter you see there, it's uh, for the uh, student ID cards and the recommendation letters uh, for anyone coming to the office they could have <laughs> their recommendation. And that's something that also galleries and museums have been providing for other people. Uh, and even a, a collector uh, wanted to give them, Brazilian collector, that was very nice. He's giving student uh, uh, recommendation letters now, so if you feel like <laughs> getting one from a Brazilian businessman, you can 
get it. That's uh, the website, and it hasn't been updated since really long time ago. Uh, it, it's very old-fashioned, but still um, uh, working for the project. And there you can request any of these uh, uh, products for free and know about the campaigns. Uh, that's the first time when the project was exhibited in an exhibition space. That's the Tamayo Museum. And there I uh, include this project as an active project. That means I don't show it as documentation of what happens in public space, uh, but it has to be active. All the distribution of things uh, related to the corporation have to uh, be active there, so you get um, other things like the uh, magic seeds, uh, posters about the campaigns, um, uh, also the student ID card. And outside the museum space, there was this um, uh, campaign about homelessness and um, how the national census works in Mexico City, that basically, uh, they don't count the homeless people and um, the justification to have a national census is to distribute the uh, resources of the country to the population. If you are not considering the, uh, this, the uh, poorest uh, people, then it's uh, somehow a contradiction. Uh, so, um, sorry, I have to be fast, but uh, in short, uh, there was a reaction uh, by the director of this institute saying that they count the homeless, but the original information came from the uh, INEGI, the institute that produces this kind of um, uh, uh, census every 10 years, so um, I didn't change anything of, of the campaign. Uh, I didn't mention this uh, friend. It's uh, the mascot of uh, the uh, Spanish bank, Banco Bilbao Vizcaya. And funnily enough, he's dressed as Robin Hood, and that's how they dress it, as also as a rocker. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it was perfect. And that photo was taken uh, on June 18th. That was the first. Uh, uh, in 1999, uh, it was the first uh, anti-capitalist uh, demonstration globally uh, that was organized as that uh, worldwide demonstration. So uh, I decided to put some um, leaflets related to the demonstration on the costume, and then I use it as a poster with the slogan of the Deutsche Bank, and uh, well, I just play a lot with these things. But when I used uh, this pig in the exhibition space, uh, the bank uh, agreed to lend furniture and also the mascot for the <laughs> exhibition. Um, they knew about the whole exhibition, but they decided only after a week uh, after the opening that uh, it was uh, too radical and that it was not good for the image, so they took away the pigs. They left the furniture, but took away the pigs. <laughs> and that became a big scandal in terms of corporate image. I think it was the first time something like that happened, this kind of controversy. Uh, I mean, we are used to uh, the taboos of religion, sex, uh, politics, but uh, this corporate censorship was, I think, uh, kind of new in that uh, institutional space. And as part of Better Life Corporation, I also wanted to work with uh, radio, uh, FM uh, radio, and that means um, it's a pirate station project because, of course, all the frequencies I are taken by commercial uh, networks. So, my idea was to open a free uh, public station, but uh, I realized that couldn't be done only by me. I needed a collective, at least, behind to produce uh, content uh, that could be broadcasted every day. So this idea um, 
at the end uh, uh, became a series of workshops and uh, projects in other areas of Mexico, mainly the state of Oaxaca, for communities that don't have access to um, uh, well, um, the main uh, communications to have their own uh, radio stations. So this is communities that are uh, so unreachable that no radio station reaches that area or not mobile company or, I mean, they uh, sometimes have uh, ele electricity and that could be also a basic thing that they don't have. But in connection to that, uh, also as part of the Better Life Corporation projects, there, there were uh, these kind of visual campaigns that very much uh, refer or connected to uh, research about local uh, economic or political situations, in this case Guatemala and Del Monte being there uh, for really long time exploiting, well not only in Guatemala but all Central Amor America exploiting um, the natural resources uh, of the countries, uh, well basically you know um, uh, fruits, vegetables and uh, this kind of um, alteration of logos uh, it, they usually become campaigns, uh, it's not only, uh, it doesn't stay in one image, but in this case it became these little fruit stickers, um, uh, big uh, mural painting. Uh, this is uh, another um, mural uh, in the context of Brazil when uh, the Baric uh, airline went bankrupt. I decided to use use that as a symbol of um, the economy at that time uh, of Brazil, but also you had references to the Amazons and the companies that are exploiting their resources there, uh, like um, what you call that cellulose from the trees, uh, reference to the uh, military equipment provided by Brazil, uh, the indigenous, and the title of this mural painting was The White Man is Afraid to Listen, and that came, and the whole uh, mural design uh, uh, was somehow generated for, uh, that's a very bad image, sorry, but that's the only one I could, uh, you can find. Uh, that was generated by this uh, event uh, when there was an uh, indigenous rights um, congress in Brazil and some Indians decided to demonstrate outside the, the space where the auditorium, the space where the conference was happening and the military repressed the demonstrators and this happened. No? one stepped on one of the demonstrators. Uh, for me, this was uh, shocking too much, especially because they were there to talk about um, indigenous rights. Uh, and then this man from the Terena uh, group uh, said that phrase, we were here just uh, to talk, but the white man is afraid to talk. Other campaigns include uh, uh, responses to European contexts, like in this case, Slovenia. Um, this uh, billboard was distributed around the city for three months, and it says, um, how long does it take to get to NATO? And it was produced at the time when uh, Slovenia hadn't entered the European Union, but um, they were in the talks or in the process to do that. But they knew that uh, that meant entering also the NATO group, so um, I decided to use that as, uh, well, a main campaign. And the thing with the logo in the middle of the billboard is that um, it's uh, NATO stars instead of the original European Union stars. The company uh, uh, providing the billboards or uh, sponsoring the billboards was really friendly with the project and decided to put it next to 
this other billboard on the left that announces Bush and Putin meeting in Slovenia. But that was the, the company's decision. I mean, it's ideal, no? It was fantastic. Some of them were also Playboy, or, but uh, they decided to match them, and that was great. It was a huge um, campaign, because in three months we had like 100 billboards uh, around uh, this tiny city of Ljubljana. And the French embassy wanted it to be removed when it was placed near their um, embassy, and somewhere else it was also removed because of a reaction. Um, I don't know how am I doing with time. Okay. Um, this is, um, uh, I think, a, a, a weapon for me. <laughs> it's uh, related to a, a an action uh, in Berlin. They asked me for a piece that was uh, developed as a performance. And what I decided to do there was to invite um, a, a friend from Ghana that uh, his family and him, they are uh, the ones that perform uh, voodoo rituals in Ghana. So I decided to course the um, uh, Bush administration. And it couldn't be made public in the theater, but we could uh, organize a closed session to uh, perform the ritual. And then I recorded it and put it inside this music box. So when you open it, you have again the, the drums that activate the voodoo ritual for me. That's the, the main um, purpose of uh, generating this object. But, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I hope I have the image, yeah. The only thing that goes with this uh, music box is a photograph um, that I found in Department of the Defense, uh, uh, they just have this photo archive and I quite like it because you don't know if Cheney is uh, caught himself or, or if it's the icing of the cake or, and the whole uh, political structure there, very clear. Uh, I like that, especially because Bush is not in the picture. Uh, so yeah, that's my weapon of uh, Bush administration destruction. Um, this is another piece related to performance. Uh, and uh, it happened in, in Madrid in the neighborhood of Lavapiés. Uh, again, they asked me to uh, produce something related to uh, public art. And I noticed that Lava Pies was a very multicultural neighborhood and that most musicians went to, uh, all these Oscars were, uh, went to other areas of the city to play to get uh, tips uh, from tourists. And um, what I uh, decided to do was put a leaflet, a poster around the city asking them to join us for a concert for the neighborhood. But the thing was they had to play what they usually play. Um, so that included solo musicians, uh, classic musicians, uh, samba, uh, rock, uh, invented instruments, uh, punk, uh, accordion, uh, all of them playing at the same time for half an hour. So I thought, okay, this is going to be a orchestral noise. Um, they were going to be remunerated, remunerated as, as musicians, paid. Uh, so they, they uh, got together and um, for me it was a surprise that uh, they ended up having this harmony and uh, also the people from the neighborhood came out and uh, either just check them out or dance to some of the uh, song rhythms and, and well, it was a, a nice harmonic experience uh, without having uh, anyone directing 
without any rehearsal. Um, it happened and uh, uh, they decided to stay playing for more than an hour. The best thing about this uh, performance for me was that um, two years later, someone of the organizers told me that some of these musicians had uh, uh, met again to play uh, more or less in the same way. But this is a, a really um, unexpected result. No, for me, it's more like a, a cultural experiment. That's a classic. Uh, maybe you know it. Uh, I gave an actor all the information I had about the uh, unethical corporate practices of McDonald's and he was performing as Ronald, inviting people to come inside the restaurant and uh, at the same time being very honest about the information related to the company. So he wasn't protesting or uh, saying any uh, thing against, let's say, about McDonald's. He was just too sincere. So he entered the restaurant and uh, it was a great actor in, in Paris. Um, and uh, it was great performance for 20 minutes. But in Norway, uh, it was a um, political performer, the one that uh, uh, did the monologue. And there, uh, they arrest him because of all the people he gathered outside the restaurant. But that was even better because uh, that appeared on the national TV. <laughs> and then the news was uh, all around the American uh, news websites that thought it was uh, good uh, news to <laughs> present. and. Um, Yep. This is uh, a, an example of the graphic uh, works and campaigns I do in Mexico City. Uh, it very much responds to uh, elements of nationalism and uh, it includes humor. And again, it, the beginning of the campaign was very much a um, cultural experiment because I didn't know if it, I was daring too much or insulting or people was going to take it as a funny thing. And well, at the end it was very well received. And I usually distribute it in September. That is the uh, commemoration of the independence. Not sure which independence now, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it, uh, the city is decorated uh, every year and uh, that's um, a scene of how it could be distributed ri really quickly um, if there is a demonstration or any public event. Uh, I can distribute you know, 2,000 in 15 minutes. And then what has been happening is that they end up appearing as part of um, political demonstrations, like the recent ones with teachers, um, uh, and then they appear in newspapers or other media, and that's the best that can happen. And that was the case of this uh, other artwork, uh, the Egalité design that was first uh, shown in a museum space, uh, was later used as part of a demonstration against um, Le Pen when the right wing reappeared uh, a little bit more in, in France. And I didn't organize that, it was just students that asked me to borrow the design and use it in the demonstration. Uh, I'll skip this one. I'll go to uh, Pansy. That's uh, another example of how one of uh, uh, an, an artwork or project uh, connects to communities uh, in Mexico. I knew uh, that uh, there was a possibility to, to build a GSM network uh, autonomous from any commercial network, having a cell phone that works in a, uh, let's say, a smaller or, or private um, a, a structure. Uh, and then I generated as 
uh, or produce it as an art project and uh, that was the first time I included in a museum space uh, this kind of project. So uh, it's a little bit complicated to explain but it's very much a transmitter that generates a cellular network that can be used between the people that subscribe like when you subscribe to your uh, uh, commercial telecom, it's just uh, autonomous. And then you can call for free to any other phone in the same network. And even if you have a con an internet connection, uh, do these free international phone calls. So the old telephone there was to make phone calls for free to anywhere in the world. And that's how it was shown in the museum space. Uh, but then um, uh, the friends I knew that had this uh, initiative, they took it to communities in Mexico and implemented it um, in some areas that didn't have uh, any uh, cellular communication, any telephone, because the commercial companies have um, uh, denied the service in those communities because it was not profitable. So they have been very, very succe successful. I'm glad about this. I think it's a major important thing as a social project. And um, they started with three communities and I think at the moment they are considering more than 20. And of course now the commercial um, network services want to install the antennas there or rent them <coughs> the services. So this kind of uh, do-it-yourself um, telecoms, I think, uh, could be a major uh, uh, social uh, intervention in these kind of communities. And that's my friend Peter. You should check them uh, online. It's really great work. They have been um, having these articles in very important newspapers. I know The Economist, uh, uh, The Wire also published a very nice article, uh, New York Times. They really got a lot of attention because I think um, at the moment the power of um, uh, telecoms, it's, uh, it's I think one of the main uh, global powers to uh, resist. And uh, this is uh, one of the examples I was mentioning from other uh, artists. And this is the Warana Power Project by Superflex. They basically uh, collaborated with uh, Warana Farmers, a cooper cooperative in the Brazilian Amazon. And they ended up producing this uh, uh, drink like let's say an independent brand that really got into the commercial uh, level and being widely distributed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the quality standards uh, decline and they, they were already distributing in convenience stores and that's major, you no? Know, when you reach a convenience store, I think you are a main brand. <laughs> they had reached that level, but then they had a problem with the, the cans uh, and uh, yeah, they had to um, stop the distribution. I mean, but the, the whole project, I think um, it's very clear uh, in terms of how art and uh, social practice can uh, be combined. Um, this is very waves. I don't know if you know about them. And for me, it's uh, one of the few examples where I think the tension between art and activism uh, is, um, is there, you know, and there is a lot to talk uh, in terms of um, their uh, strategies and uh, what social activism really uh, represents. And uh, that's going to be the last uh, example. Uh, this is um, engraving a graphic uh, produced by Leopoldo Mendens, who was active in the 30s in Mexico. This 
is very much a post-revolutionary artist, and this is, I think, the uh, best exhibition I've seen of uh, graphic work in really long time. Uh, he's a main uh, Mexican artist and reference in terms of um, how he understand uh, or understood himself as an artist and also um, how his work was related to political issues, but uh, that also he saw his uh, uh, artworks as his main tool to uh, produce or relate in political terms. And that's the last uh, slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>